This is the Sunday of the Ascension. Our first lesson is Luke's account of Jesus' ascension as recorded in the book, The Acts of the Apostles. In introducing this book, Luke writes to someone called Theophilus, which could be an individual or could be a generic reference to someone who believes in God. But he's picking up where he left off in his gospel, and he's telling the story about how Jesus ascended into heaven. The gospel ends with the witness of the resurrected Christ, and Acts brings this to close in the 40-day appearances of Jesus. The disciples are still anticipating some earthly kingdom, but Jesus tells them not to be concerned because even he does not know when God is going to establish his final kingdom. Instead, he tells them not to worry about chronology, but rather to wait for the time when the Holy Spirit, which has been promised, will be given to them. We have two Greek words here. The one is chronos, from which we get the English word chronology. The disciples are asking about a specific historical chronology. Jesus replies and talks about the kairos of God. The kairos is God's time. It's God's fulfillment. It's God's presence. And so as Jesus tells the disciples that they will be his witnesses throughout the world, and that they should remain in Jerusalem until the Spirit is given to them, he is lifted up from the ground and disappears from their sight. They keep looking up to watch him go away, but angels appear and tell them not to do so, that the same Jesus they saw leave would return again. In the meantime, they should do as he instructed. And so the disciples return to Jerusalem and are continually in the temple praising God. From the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Luke writes, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And the apostles returned to Jerusalem, from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. 
Here ends our first lesson. Psalm 47 is part of a small collection of psalms that celebrates the sovereignty of God. It was probably used at an annual celebration of the enthronement of God as Israel's true monarch. This is an enthronement psalm, a group of psalms used on festival occasions when God is declared king. Our lesson celebrates God's enthronement as king of all nations. Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves, Selah. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of peoples gather as the peoples of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. And this is our song. Our New Testament lesson is a portion of Paul's letter to a congregation in the city of Ephesus in what is now modern day Turkey. And this passage that we have is the heart of a Hebrew barakah, or a celebratory prayer of praise, thanksgiving. Here Paul celebrates, just as we heard in the psalm, the sovereignty of God, represented by his redemptive work in Christ. This poetic passage exalts Christ as the sovereign, who is above every authority and power throughout the universe. God has put all things under his feet. Christ assumes his power not just for the benefit or for the sake of his body, the church. No, the power of Christ's resurrection is manifested in the lives of believers throughout the world. From Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. St. Paul writes, For this reason, Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as mighty strength. He exerted it when he raised Christ Jesus from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is our New Testament lesson. For our gospel, we return to Luke this time reading from his gospel. And Jesus' final appearances to his disciples present a slightly different account of the, of the ascension. Before leaving, Jesus taught them how to interpret the Jewish scriptures, which told of his messianic mission, a mission for which he now commissions them. The risen Christ interprets to the disciples how his ministry, especially his death and resurrection, is a fulfillment of the scriptures. 
And the purpose for all this is the forgiveness of sins, that it might be offered to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. He reminds them that they are witnesses of all these things, that before beginning their witness, however, they should wait until they have received the promised spirit from on high. Christ led the disciples to a place called Bethany, about a Sabbath day's journey from Jerusalem. And while he lifted his hands in blessing, he ascended to his Father. The disciples responded to these events with unsurpassed joy and praise as they worshiped continually in the temple. This is the Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 44th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 